In this video, we'll discuss the use of spin in Hartree-Fock and how this leads to a simplified expression for the Hartree-Fock energy of any given atom. So we'll remind ourselves of our one electron uh, energies and integrals here in Hartree-Fock, the one electron operator being the kinetic energy operator for electron I plus the potential energy of the electron being attracted to the nucleus. So minus one half del squared I, kinetic energy, minus charge of the nucleus divided by distance to the nucleus, RIN. The one electron energy of a given of a given electron then, electron I, is HI, which equals the integral over all space for electron one. So minus infinity to infinity in X, Y, and Z of psi star I times H acting on psi I for electron one in atomic orbital I. We then have our two electron integrals, this being a one electron integral depending on only the coordinates of electron one. We have two electron integrals depending simultaneously on the coordinates of two electrons. These are both integrals over all space for electron one and electron two. So they go from minus infinity to infinity for x1, y1, and z1, as well as x2, y2, and z2. The Coulomb integral, Jij, is, and notice that relative to the previous videos, I've rearranged these integrals a little bit. Now I have psi star i, psi i for electron one on the left. This is the charge density of electron one in atomic orbital i. Psi star j r2, psi j r2. This is the charge density of electron two in atomic orbital j. And then we have these two charge densities multiplied, to, toward, multiplied times each other divided by their distance r1, 2 at these locations r1 and r2 integrated over all possible locations of, of electron one and electron two. So the result is the average repulsion of the charge density of electron one relative to the average charge density of electron two in orbitals i and j. Then we have the exchange integral, which messes all of that neat, simple interpretation up and confuses us a bit. We take psi j, which had electron two in it before. Now electron one is in psi j. It has been exchanged from orbital i to orbital j. And electron two has been exchanged from j to i while the complex conjugates are still the same. So this is electron one in the or overlap of atomic orbital i and j times electron two in the overlap of atomic orbitals j and i divided by the r12 operator again integrated over all space. So this is similarly a, an electron repulsion energy but it just purely arises due to the fact that our wave function is a Slater determinant and there's lots of minus signs and exchanging of things that goes on inside there. So I can represent these integrals by a Dirac notation shorthand. For the one electron integrals, I have this bracket, which is a chemist notation bracket. So I bracket I H I is my one electron energy. Then for J I J, in chemist notation, I have this bracket I I bar J J. So this represents psi star I, psi I for R1, psi star J, psi J for R2, Coulomb integral I I J J for J I J. For the exchange integral K I J, that's represented by this bracket I J J I, where we have now exchanged electrons one and two in the non-complex conjugate part. So we have I J J I, notice the indices there. And the total Hartree-Fock energy, we remind ourselves, is the sum over all electrons of their one electron energy, both their kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus, plus our two electron energy, one half sum from i equals one to n, sum from j equals one to n. So summing over, double sum over the electrons of the two electron energy, j i j, the Coulomb integral, minus k i j, the exchange integral. So, so far we've done all this without discussing spin at all. So electron spin comes into play in the following way. Well, spin up would be represented as alpha of omega one for electron one, or a state alpha as a Dirac ket. Beta would be spin down, beta of omega one. 
we can uh, the overlap of these two spin functions so the integral over the spin function of alpha star times alpha or beta star times beta is both one so these spin functions are normalized they are also orthogonal integral of alpha star times beta is zero as is the integral of beta star times alpha so these spin functions are orthonormal we represent the we represent a spin integral by this Dirac bracket so integral of omega star 1 omega 2 is going to be the Kronecker delta it's going to be 1 if omega 1 and omega 2 are equal it's going to be 0 if they are different so now instead of having what are called spatial orbitals psi i of electron r the spatial coordinates so we have what is called a spin orbital which depends not only on x y z the spatial variables it depends also on the spin variable in a spin function so a spin orbital depends on x y z and our spin variable sigma all right so as i have represented here in chemist notation a spin integral is one in which we have our brackets and one where we have integrated out spin is called a spatial integral and is represented by parentheses so we want to get rid of spin we want to let it do whatever it does and then work only with the spatial integrals moving forward so the space the spatial one electron integral is equal to the spin is equal to our spin integral there actually I think these should be reversed but whatever all right we have spatial integral is going to equal the the spin the spatial part times our spin integration so if they have the same spin they're going to be one in this case we notice that this is both electron one so electron one has to have the same spin in both cases so in our one electron integrals we end up having just the same result that our, our spatial integral equals our spin integral so our spatial integral equals our spin integral times for our two electron integrals uh, we have electron one on the left electron two on the right for our Coulomb integral we have R1 R1 and then R2 R2 so in each case we have the overlap of omega 1 and omega 1 then omega 2 and omega 2 electron 1 is the same function in both cases so this ends up being one in all cases all of our Coulomb integrals survive just as all of our one electron integrals survive the interesting case now comes with the exchange integrals we have exchanged <coughs> Uh, basis fun we have exchanged orbitals i and j so now in order for this integral to be non-zero i and j have to be the same spin because we have psi star i here and psi j there we have the overlap of their spin functions psi star j psi star i there psi j there psi star j there psi i there so this is the 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 exchange integral times our spin integral squared which the Kronecker delta squared is still just the Kronecker delta. Zero squared is zero, one squared is one. So this is equal to the exchange integral times whether or not our spins are equal. So this gives us in the end a nice easy interpret interpretability to the total Hartree-Fock energy. So if we use what's called a restricted Hartree-Fock, meaning our spin up and spin down functions in the same spatial orbital are the same, we get the following expression. So the Hartree-Fock energy is we give an, a one electron energy for all electrons. Each electron has kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus. We give a plus Jij for all pairs of electrons. Every pair of electrons repel one another through their Coulomb integral. And if the, if the two electrons have the same spin, then they get a negative Kij. So all pairs of same spin electrons get a negative Kij. So we'll work out what this means and how we get this expression for the case of the boron atom. There's three levels here, psi 1, psi 2, and psi 3, representing the 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals. Two electrons in 1s spin up and spin down. Two electrons in 2s spin up, spin down. One electron in 2p just to spin up. So we need to give each electron its one electron energy, its kinetic energy, and its attraction to the nucleus. So the Hartree-Fock energy for beryllium, this isn't beryllium, this is boron. 
get rid of that. Hartree-Fock energy for boron. All right, the Hartree-Fock energy for boron, uh, 2H1 plus 2H2 plus H3, giving a one electron energy for all three. We have plus Jij for all electron pairs. There's a J11. These two repel each other. Four sets of J12. One, two, three, four for these two electrons in each level. There's four combinations of how they repel each other. Plus the two electrons in one repel the electron in three, two J13. Plus the two electrons in psi two repel the one in psi three, two J23. The two electrons in orbital two repel each other plus J22. That's all pairs of electrons. Now we had a minus KJ for all same spin electron pairs. So here we have electron, the same, the same spin, uh, spin up and spin down electrons in one and two, minus two K12. There's one spin up here and one spin up in three, minus K13. There's one spin up here and one spin up there, minus K23. So since we have integrated out spin for our, for our Hartree-Fock uh, one electron and two electron integrals, we see that all the one electron integrals survive, all the Coulomb integrals survive, and the exchange integrals survive if both electrons have the same spin. So that gives us the expression for the Hartree-Fock atom, which we tested on boron, giving us that every electron has one electron energy, kinetic energy and detraction to the nucleus, and then all pairs of electrons repel each other through the Coulomb integral, and all same spin pairs of electrons make up for that a little bit by attracting each other through the exchange integral.